Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 21st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Still a little bit under the weather, so trying to keep this uh, reasonable uh, short here, but we got a couple things to talk about here. First of all, in diaries, we got a dot .bat file from Xavier, where Xavier is walking you again uh, through some deobfuscation. So for the malware analysts out here, certainly a worthwhile read to see how to beautify the code from obfuscation, how to use CyberChef, it's actually just, I think, released version 10, and how to then analyze the resulting code. And for the Citrix users out there looking for more help figuring out if your Citrix ADC or NetScaler device is already compromised, a blog post on data.net has a checklist walking you through different items that you should check in order to verify if your particular device was already attacked by this CVE 2023-3519 vulnerability. And Qualys provided some instructions on how to exploit a recent open SSH vulnerability, CVE 2023-38408. It's a vulnerability in SSH agent. SSH agent is a tool that allows you to manage private keys and easily forward private keys as you sort of connect from one system to another. It's always considered a little bit a risky tool to use, but what I found here was a way how an attacker who already has some access to the system is able to then basically get a user using SH agent to execute arbitrary code on the attacker's behalf. Pretty interesting exploit here, pretty lengthy description also, but all the details needed to actually exploit it are in this post. And VMware released an update for the Spring framework that's maintained by VMware. The update does fix a flaw in the configuration file where if you're using double wildcards, so basically asterisk, asterisk, well, uh, you create patterns that can be bypassed if you're trying to use that for any kind of access control. And then we have yet another vulnerability in a baseband management controller. This time it's the American Megatrends Mega Rack. Two vulnerabilities here. One is an authentication bypass. All you need to do is spoof the right HTTP header. And then there is a code injection that can be used to execute arbitrary code. This is done via the Redfish extension interface. Redfish is the newer uh, sort of web-based uh, remote management interface that a lot of these baseband uh, management controllers implement. And as pointed out in the blog post, uh, an exploit here could even include some physical damage to the system by, for example, adjusting voltages in the BIOS. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.